Yeah, I'm just glad I didn't really, you know, I, I starting starting this again. I didn't invest too heavily on on this whole uh, whole streaming gig. Uh -huh. Oh, excuse me. I mean, it's just to start out to test the waters to see how it works out. But I have a lot of friends that uh, gave me advice just to just to uh, get this going, just to get my feet wet, I guess. Yo, know, these Radio Shack uh, uh, cutters are really good. Though. I, I I love using this to cut plastic because like it doesn't uh, fuck up the. Uh, what is it? The cutter over here, the edge of the cutters. It's still pretty sharp, though. Um, right over here. Just cut this over here. Snip this. Like the hacko is a good, good to use, but not uh, to, to for you know for a certain extent because you might damage the, the the thing on it. Pretty cheap though, like these Radio Shack ones. They're like uh, five or six bucks. It does a job for most cases. I mean, the only thing I fucked up was uh, this part over here, but it won't uh, bother me because it like the, this part over here, the inside over here, is still sharp. Um, these these hacker ones that you generally replace like every uh, every six months or so because it gets worn out over here easily. But but the micro cutters, these micro cutters are really good too. So okay. Uh, where are we at? Okay, yeah, let's grab another issue my kit. Soon, get, let's get that ready. This is good. Uh, let's get another one of these kits. If you need the link to get the, the DC uh, digital boards, let me link you real quick. You guys always keep these things in stock. He's, a, he's another nice dude, like Citrus. Like that. Really takes care of people. Yeah, he he's always gonna replenish them, and the good part is he always replenishes his stock, uh, which is good to, good to have because he 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 knows what he's doing. He like he has like a, a good product and like people there's a huge demand for it. People want it, and so he tries to do his best to get, keep him keep him replenished as much as fast as possible. Okay, that's that. Cool. I'm happy about that, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the same thing with me with the, the <clears throat> with the Ultra HDMI, man. The flex cable, uh, I, I I waxed that shit, man. Like when I first started out, I, I wasn't using a uh, liquid flux or anything like that, so I fucked up on the first install. Which is, uh, it happens. It happens. Let me, well, no, I'm not ready to start this yet. I want to do the, the shielding. Very fast, okay. I have to this up. I have this housing over here and this housing. I mean, the shielding. I might have to do this over here. Okay. Yeah, so we're just gonna cut off uh, this part over here, this part, and then this other part. So this part is gonna be going to the, the, the we're gonna be making uh, space for the ribbon so it doesn't get pinched, and then uh, this part so that uh, board, the DC DC digital board sits in properly. I'm gonna use these cutters again. These cutters again. Just uh, break them off over here. You know what's crazy though? Like I, I'm, I'm so used to work on a floor. I, I can't, I can't sit on this and do this for some odd reason. Slip this part over here too. And then once you have those snipped, uh, there's the pipes. Oh yeah, word. 
Wait. It helps out. You're, you're welcome, dude. Then you just take that. Take uh, your uh, pliers, grab it, and then yeah. It takes a bit of time. I mean, liquid flux is a seat, is a, it's a thing that, that helps out with the, with the cable. It help uh, make the install a lot smoother. Because you're working on, on, on a thin ass uh, uh, flex ribbon. You don't want to apply too too much heat, and then the the the, the flux compensates for it. Though. Oh yeah, I got it. This is done. It, it compensates for the heat, man. So not only that, it provides like a good lubricant for the solder. It also compensates compensates the heat. So you know, if you're working with something fragile, it won't uh, overheat it or, or roast it. Cut it towards here. And that's done. I think I can probably smooth this out, but whatever. I want to keep this leveled as, as well too, because I don't want uh, when you put the board in, it'll bounce right right out. Like it'll sit like that instead of that instead of uh, flush. Oh, there it is. Okay, so put this over here. As you can see, you know, it's not leveled as proper. Oh properly as I want it to be. Let's put this away. Yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Like, I, I'd be breaking my own shit, you know. If you're starting with something new, practice on your own shit first. Don't practice on other people's stuff. Like that's that's the best thing to do. That is a really really smart uh smart idea. Cause that way you know you fucked up at that. You know it's your own thing. You don't want to fuck up anybody else's uh, uh system. So. And then once you're comfortable doing it, you know on on your own system, you could, and you know it makes you feel comfortable. Once you, if you get it down on your on your own system. Uh, couple, you know, whenever it is successfully, it gives you that sense of confidence at that point to work on other people's systems. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. I, I when I first started doing uh, the NES RGB, I went through three fucking twin Famicoms, man, because I didn't know how to decide the PPU. Or sometimes, you know, like the, the PPU, the solder. Uh, it's hard to remove sometimes. Yeah, that happens too, dude. It kind of puts you in a, in, in a sort of a tough position at that point, you, you know, because you fucked up somebody's system. You're like, uh, I, I don't know what to do, bro. Uh, here you go. And, you know, next thing you know, they're just going to be like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> You're gonna have one salty motherfucker on you. I mean, yeah, one salty dude, man, like, like, like at you because you because you messed up their system. All right, let's put this over here. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Like I, I messed up the Twin Famicom like three times. On my third try, I got it right because like I, I uh, messed up the traces on the PPU end of it. Like when I did the install, um, just desoldering the PPU is probably the hardest thing for me, I guess. But you know, just practice. Uh, just do it again another day. Happens. We all we all make mistakes. I mean, if we if we did we, we didn't make any mistakes, like 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 we wouldn't be here right now. Like you learn from it at that point. I need my cigarette too. I think that helps make a, a great modder as well. Oh shit, uh, block. Like if you uh, realize your mistakes and then learn from uh, your experiences from there, you could actually reflect on it and then it, you could improve it in the future and see you know, where you went wrong. It's just like life, I guess, you know.
So, I mean, sometimes it might take like uh, a couple of tries. Take, it might be, you know, a few tries before you get it down right. Yeah. Okay, so this is good. That. Okay, got this block over here. This is kind uh, of Put this back now. get like two of them for like a hundred bucks for, uh, for like an impact driver this and then two chargers and the ba like two battery packs and a charger and it does the job like I love this thing it has like a lifetime uh, warranty too On the fourth block, I mean the fourth notch over here. So it's like that. Whoops. With the, with the guy that uh, Citrus gives you. stick mods, uh, sometimes like painting occasionally, um, but mostly like, you know, mods, mods, uh, mods, upgrades, restoration sometimes too, like recapping, I, I, I don't know like if I should do like recapping video uh, streams because it, it, it's kind of like long and boring, like I've done a bunch of them at one point, um, just with the game gear re recapping, uh, it wasn't uh, too exciting, I guess. Like, I did some uh, PCB assemblies too with like Morty's board, his uh, RGB amp. Like, I was doing some SMD assembly and stuff, just populating them. There you go, clean. And you know, you can always reuse this, but it, oh, like, I use this like once or twice after it's been used and then just throw it out. You don't want to over uh, use it because it'll wear out the holes on it though. Okay, so put this away. Uh. Let me see. I, I could. I mean, if, if it's a request, I could take in requests too. If you want to see, uh, if you want to see whatever you know needs to be done, what needs to be done, I could probably just do take on like requests and stuff like that as well. It's just a lot of cleaning. I mean, I could chat. Yeah, totally. Like doing game gears are probably ugh, they're they're so bad to work with sometimes. Cause like. Like, it smells like cat piss at that point. Um, it really smells like cat piss. Well, not cat piss, but like rotten fish or like dirty ass, put, you know, puss. So I'm just taking this little file and just like shaking this up. Damn, sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's uh. Oh, 
Oh, this isn't that bad though. You know, if you get the right filers, just gotta like be careful with it. Just file things. Just want to make sure it's aligned. So, like, I use like two different types of filers. I use uh, this uh, three triangle looking one to like straighten out the, the, the edges of it. So, it looks like a uh, rectangle. So, like, I, I could actually straighten it, straighten it out, file it out, so the corners are not well rounded. You could take out. Shape. You got a nice set of filers. They're, they're not too bad though. Uh, this is this, let me check out the one I use. I, I bought it from Micro Center. Uh, Performance tool. That's the one. This one. It's like fifteen bucks for it. it comes with like a, 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 a hex driver, but I don't use the hex driver at all. Nice. Yeah, I mean that guy helps you out. That guy totally helps you out. That uh, drill guide I just had earlier. I see. With this, with these filers, it helps uh, take shape a bit. Like, do you want to just increase the the height of the the hole? Just use the flat one. Like jeweler files, like they, they're basically the size of the ju what jewelers use. So look it off here. There's different ways to use it. Uh, if you want to like uh, make the rectangle shape better, um, people use like an exacto knife to carve it out. I can't. I don't know how to use that though. People use like a, a, a like a or an exacto knife. Just to get the shape going, but for me, I, I use a filer. It, it, it does a job for me. So let's let's see if it fits it properly. It does, but now I think the problem is it might be uh, getting caught. So, like as you can see, see how it's bending up. It's not staying flush. I think I might have to level this back up or just fix up this part so it doesn't uh, it doesn't curl up like that. Over here, like what I like to do is like I like to use a, the tip of it and just scrape off the, the excess plastic over here. Let's see, what happens. Eh, it happens, man. This is uh, we can work it comes with it. I'm just going to mount it without the shoulder. Means I have to dust it off and stuff. Not there yet. We are not there yet. Alright, cool. So using this part uh, gives it gives it uh, files off and you know gives it the length for the for the hole. And not only that, I I, I want to keep it nice and straight. Oh, 
Now I'm just uh, putting a gent gent gentle pressure on it. I'm not I'm not uh, pushing too hard, filing it too hard. Otherwise, I don't want a huge gaping hole on it. to uh, get this done. Now it sits in flush, but now I just gotta level this off so, so it doesn't uh, curl up. Okay. This gives it that extra layer though too, so like, uh, it might be a little bit here. Yeah. So it might be, uh, you don't want to like have a, uh, I hate that's uh, you know it's too small. Otherwise, it'll squish the, the port on it. smaller drill bit. So what I use now that this thing is good, I'm just gonna like drill a hole through it. Just want to apply a lot of pressure on it. So it drills through both layers through the metal and the plastic in it itself. So now this part of it here. If I don't apply any pressure, it should go nowhere. And we got the... Oh yeah, I know, right? Shit. Yeah, I gotta check the system out. Fuck this shit. I mean, you're bound to drill through the label of it. There's no way around it, though. Type one screwdriver. So put the screw on the bottom. That's fine. That's fine. That's funny, it didn't break through the label. You normally it does. Interesting. I probably have to cut, cut a little bit off. It's fine. Secure this uh, son of a bitch down. Cool. Just hold the, the nut over here. And just, it should be good. 
Hold that out of place. Take the other uh, screw, put it right over here. And I like using this type of screwdriver because it's like magnetized. It helps. Like we do it a lot with like this assembly and stuff. It's good to have like a, a demagnetizer or magnetizer um, to uh, to move screws and shit. So that way it doesn't fall into place and you're like, oh, what do I do from there? Okay, so this I can put away. Like what I mean is, is like something like this. This will help uh, help uh, hold the screws down. So like you use this, magnetize it, it'll stick. And now with the magnetizer over here, you hit that part. No wait. That's still sticking. Well, well, for the most part, there's a. Uh, it helps stick, you know, it helps your thing. Helps you screw down. I, I, yeah. I mean, I just got a table. I don't want to fuck up my table, too, so. But I, I, I'm really good with my hands on, on this shit. It's a fresh table, man. I got it from my team, bro. All right, so that that's done. Uh, let me just. But yeah, the 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 plank, the, the the wood does help though. I might have to uh, set some space for it, but it's fine. As you can see. All right, so we take uh, this little Wi-Fi uh, piece over here, this antenna. Just pop it in right over here. So we see what we here. Yep, and then once you have that down, let's take uh, the tweezers, pop this out, and then bada bing bada boom, there you go, it's aligned. Sit right on top of the modem again. So, all right. Let me go take a picture of this, I gotta take some pictures. Uh, for, uh, just for uh, social media sake, like. There you go. Nice. And now over here we'll just focus on this board. Oh my my uh So at this point we are gonna go Focus on uh, focus on this part again. We're gonna have to prep up the points to uh, to install the ribbon cable. Just give me a second. I just want to put this in first. Let's see. Clean workstation. I don't think, well, I do need this still. I don't need this no more. It's crazy, like, I, I, I have like a little tool set and everything, like, I just have everything over here. So. Oh yeah, we want to prepare for uh, this part over here. Prep up the part for the <coughs> oh, excuse me, installation. God, I'm burping like crazy right now. <laughs> I don't know why. So from this part over here, we want to just remove these two resistors uh, right over here. Uh, was it 6 
301 and 302. Yeah. Yeah, 301 and 302. Right, these two. These two. So just remove that. Let's just get your uh, soldering quick. Set these things up. Turn on the pads. Over here and let's see. As far as what? Like three holes. So we got this over here. Just apply some flux on it. Just a little bit. Well, it doesn't look like a lot, but it's, uh, that's a little bit up here. And then from here, I'm going to sit down and do this. Oops. down here and then uh, just just tack onto it like, like we did earlier. Let me move the camera up a bit easier. There you go. Yeah, so just tack on this. Oh, it dries it really quickly. Yeah, you once you apply this, you got to make sure that it, uh, you uh, sound it quickly. So it's tacked in for now. I'm not going to fully solder it. Just wanted to align it properly. I switched it to I used the wrong tip. Again, you know, just use a, a chisel tip on it. As that'll help you out uh, for soldering. You just glide through it. So just add a little bit of solder. Like with soldering, it, it, when you swap in a new tip and stuff, you always want to like add in and uh, add fresh solder to it, and then and then retouch up on it because it's it, it's good it's good uh, soldering it's good uh, soldering method. Practice actually soldering practice just to uh to to add solder so it doesn't oxidize like you don't want it looking all brown and shit like that um, otherwise it won't it won't stick in properly like the solder won't work properly always clean your tip so it doesn't oxidize so there. Just want to keep the tip nice and shiny when you solder. Oxidation is like the worst thing. Is like if you want if you want to keep your uh, tips up and running for a while, you want to you want to keep adding solder so it doesn't uh, mess up the the the, part, the tip of it. I added too much solder here, but that's how you keep your. Uh, that's how you take care of your soldering iron. Like if you have like a a, a really good you know, like a really expensive soldering iron, you it, it's good practice to take care of them because if you don't, you're gonna be sp spending a lot of money just to buy another tip to replace them. Yep, keep your shit clean. Keep it uh, coated with solder. That looks good. That doesn't look good from here. But... Get the uh, zoom in.
Right over there. There's a bridge right over there. It's pretty, pretty big now. Fish deployment right over there. What kind of flux do I use? I use uh, MG Chemicals, uh, no clean flux. I, I buy like a liter, it comes in a liter for like 25 bucks, and it'll last you for like three or four years, man. Like, I, I just went through my uh, first, my first liter within three years. Let me send you a link for it though. Ah. Just give me a second. Yeah, I'll send you a link right now. It's pretty good over here. I mean, it's probably just a good camera angle at this point. Okay, let me send you a link. Oh yeah, it's there too. Yeah, I have I have it there as well. So like, if you. I know people are going to be asking me about this sort of thing, so I'll just, you know, I have it there. It's generally all the tools that I use. Alright, nice. That, that looks good now. A lot better. It's probably because of my uh, camera. It looks mag grainy. Solder there. Got yeah, some solder for the pads. Resistors you just removed. Okay. Here. And then over here. Some solder. I mean, uh, flux over here. You just want to also make sure that the, the pins align, you know, properly to the pads. So most sometimes you'll get like uh, the ribbon cable that doesn't, it won't align properly to it. But you have to uh, just have to line it properly, line it properly in order for it to work. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I uh, had to get like a camera mount for that. Sometimes, like, I I wonder, you know, like I I was doing a practice run by myself, like before I started streaming. Like my 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 big ass head was getting in the way as well. Flux, tap it down.
the joints nice. And with this part over here, this is the last one over here. Just gonna send it back down. So there you go. Looks pretty nice. This joints will look pretty solid. No bridges there. No bridges there either. Yeah, you, this is a microscope camera that I'm using. Um, it's a 14 megapixel higher camera. But it's, you can pick it up on Amazon. It's like some Chinese brand, but it does a job though. I mean, as you can see. The iron, um, I use, this is a, a FX100 uh, 100 on it. And it doesn't have like a temperature set on it. Uh, there's like three settings I could use, well, six settings, but they're already, uh, adjusted at 650 uh, Fahrenheit, 675, which is under boosted mode. Normal mode is under 650. There's a uh, two, which is uh, 750, and then the highest is 850 and 875. Um, it also depends. Like the thing about this the sound I, I use, it automatically sets the temperature based on whatever tips that you have. So when you plug it in, it will automatically set the temperature for you. But it heats up within like, you know, as soon as you power it up, it he heats up within like five to 10 seconds. It's a heat inducted thing. Um, so right now I have it on around 675, 650. That's the temperature for it. Because you don't really need to use like anything lower than, you know, like 650. 650. But that's uh, what I use. And the temperature is really good though. Like it heats up really quickly. It's controlled. Like it's stable. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't work like a regular uh, hackle uh, iron that I have. Like heat inductive soldering iron is really good because it, it, it takes no time to heat it uh, to start up. Heat, you know, heating up the tip. And when it cools down, it cools down quickly though on the spot. Yeah, the eight 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 D is pretty good too. I've had that uh, as well. And that it's pretty reliable, but it takes a little bit too long to heat up, like you know, for the heating element to heat up. It, it has a heating element, whereas this one, the heat is from the tip itself. You just plug it in and everything, and it'll automatically heat up really quick as soon as you power it up. And then when you shut it off, it cools down really quickly too. Like it has like a smart sensor on it too. Like if you're not using it, it, oh, it goes into like sleep sleep mode and stuff. Does a job for me. I mean, uh, this is really, really reliable. Like, I've, I've gone a long way with this. Like, it's about three years since I had this. Like, I, I use uh, the eight 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 D for uh, for like field work occasionally if I'm doing like cat arcade cabinets and stuff. But I also have a, a TS one hundred, which is a pen soldering pen, which is really cool in my opinion. It's like really small and portable, but the only disadvantage is like you have like a big laptop uh, battery with the adapter to go with it. But I mean, if for, for somebody to start out, you could go with like a regular set uh, for like twenty five bucks, like the one I put out on the panel on the link. If you, if you go to the about me thing, you'll see it. Okay, so. That one's really good too. All right. I mean, it's really solid. Good thing is those tips are replaceable as well. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, breaking your tips and stuff. Okay, I'll take a picture of this real quick. Just take a picture of it. Yeah, I'm just taking a picture, you know, just to post it up on social media again. Alright, 
So right now, I'll just take like a, another three piece of wire. Just take that. Just take that down. Snip that off. There you go. All right, now we're just gonna focus on uh, this end over here. So again, just prep up uh, the three wires over here. And we're gonna focus on uh, 601 and 602, and then 201 right here. And I'm gonna just measure the other side again. Snipped on, cool. And I just strip them. It's funny, I, I, I use like a uh, cuticle cutter to strip my wires instead of using like a standard stripper. It doesn't work for me. I, I don't know why though. Like, I, I can't really control how I strip it. And then from here, just uh, tint, tint this guy. Okay. And now, from these points, uh, as we did before, we just have to pre prepare them so like, it'll be easier for them to adhere together. Alright, cool. So now that's done, just on that, you just touch it up a bit. Touch that up a bit. And then touch up uh, this part over here. There you go. See? Nice. Nice and uh, straight. Alright, now that's done. Just want to take that, just bend it over here. Like a 90 degree angle, just bend it. I, th I think the last one I cut was a little bit, I had a little bit too much slack on it. So I'll probably just keep it right, right over here. Like about an inch and a half away from the, you know, from the board. So that way you could actually uh, put it soldered to the reset points. Strip that. Just be careful. Okay. And now strip these two. One. Two. That's good. Now with that done, it's time to tin up a uh... I swear this remote is kind of like retarded. It's like I, I want it to go like zoom out, it just zooms in when I zoom out. Stupid ass uh, thing. All right, so what we have to do is just tin, I mean, uh, just prep up these points for player one, player two, and reset. Okay. Now just take uh, the wires that we had before. We'll take the purple wire, that's the reset wire. And then that's that. See, that's uh, nice and soldered in. 
Now that's down. Now I just pop in the ribbon from here. And gently just lift off this tab over here where the so you could just insert the ribbon in there. Close up. You'll hear a snap. And once that's done, tuck the ribbon in, make sure it's nice and secure. And let's see. Alright, cool right here. We got this over here, just pop this over here. Wait. Control. Control thing majig. Pop that over there. And get this ready. It's funny though, like uh, just a little side uh, side note, like if you're doing a DCHMIs. There's like two different type of control ports. There's one in brown, like one with the brown top, like it's one sided on the bottom. And then this one, this two, uh, this one has, it's a double sided PCB. Um, the thing is, it's like, you know, with the fans, like sometimes the joints over here break off. This is where the fan goes, uh, the socket over here. And like these are a lot better than the one, than the single sided ones, because if, if you, uh, you know, remove a fan on the, on the ones without the, the double sided PCB, the joints break off easily. So that's just uh, like a little heads up, I guess. It's a lot more secure. Like sometimes when I, when I do this, like I, I try to reinforce the, the SATA points on, on the single sided PCBs. And it's crazy, like the Dreamcast, uh, won't start up properly if the fan's not detected. Okay, so pop that over there. I'm not going to use a disk drive this time, though. I'm just using a GDN here. I have like a, like this GDMU here. Not so legit GDMU. It does a job, like I have a have this for testing. Let's pop this in. So that way I don't have to worry about the, the taking out the drive and shit. It's like the screws getting away. And yeah, this is, uh, I think this should be done if all goes well. There you go. Yay. We did it. We did it. We did it. Hooray. Yay. Another DC Digital hooked up. This is, a, this is also on 482, as opposed to the other one. Yep. We did it, man. We did it, all right? We're in there, bro. Let's see. I put resolution. Let's see what it looks like. Let's do this one. It's fine. Yeah, just load up a game. Make sure everything is working. That looks a lot nicer. Is the sound good though or bad? Is it is it cutting out or no? It's not cutting out this time, right? Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, because for for some odd reason it was just cutting out like at first. See, let's put a game down. What, what kind of games do you want to see? Just for shit and giggles. Yeah, you got some crispy ass uh, HDMI right now. Check out the graphics, bro. Let's see, let's get something really pretty. Yes. 
So nah, it's too generic, bro. I don't know. Oh no, it's not loading. No. What happened? Oh, it is loading. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, it's it's the uh, bias, right? It's not the bias. So yeah. Oh, it um, I've. I think it was a Japanese cake uh, 1.031. You can't use 1.032. I know. I know that's for sure. The Japanese cake uh, does not have the special BIOS uh, logo screen. The one that you generally have that has a logo screen, the special logo screen, is the Link 83. So, do I like my chicken dark and white? Oh. Thing. It's pretty clear, man. Like, okay. Yeah, the Japanese uh, one point oh three two cake, Japanese uh, cake, is not as good though. But yeah. Oh hey, how's it going? Oh, we spoke. I think we spoke about it on uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going, man? Uh, hold on. I'll, I'll try to catch up to it. It's like I, I don't. Oh, whoops. I don't really know too much. But yeah. Is it, are you saying it's on my way? It's on the way? I think. So yeah, the 1.032 Japanese cake doesn't have full compatibility with like region mods. Like it breaks the mod though uh, from working. They unfortunately never had a 1.033. That would have fixed everything, but I, I never saw it released at that point, so. Let's do, uh... Let's do soccer. No, no soccer, I don't even know. Mm. Fucking hot trigger. You guys should see this thing. They do. They do. Um, generally, you want to put it right over here uh, if you're doing like a GDME, but I, I believe they fixed it though. It's fixed at that point. You can apply it over here or over here. Oh, you want to see that alpha 3? Okay, sure, 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 sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally. Uh, it's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Right. I got you, Monte. Thank you. Yeah, I was supposed. To, I think I was supposed to hook up a uh, SNES with uh, RGB on it for for the HD retrovision cables to work. Yeah, you want to see this, right? Hey, let me get a stick for this. Use an arcade stick with this practice of goggles and shit. So, this is my arcade stick. Uh, it works on pretty much everything. I've had this thing since uh, my old tournament days and stuff. And it uh, works for pretty much all the old classic systems. It's compatible with everything. It's just like literally plug and play. Plug it into the thing and it just works from there. Oh wait, I lied. Wait, what? Well, you no work. 
No. There you go. Okay, cool. So let's uh, do some alpha, yes. Random, I guess. Turbo 2, turbo. That shit is fucking crispy, you know? Set. Yeah, it, it's uh, really good, man. It is really, really good. Let's see. This is, he's bad broken in this game, man. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, what you get for the DC Digital. As, as, as you can see on the other side, you know, with the, with the power cable, like the, the quality difference, there's a huge difference uh, on it, though. It looks like emulators, huh? It's funny, I'm trying to play this on a capture card too, it's like, it, it, it's not, there's not any lag, I mean, there's a little bit of lag, but it, it still works, so. Like, I, I can still pretty much input all my moves and stuff. Alpha 2 was my shit back then. <laughs> He's alright though. But as you can see, the, you know, the graphics is really pretty good. Oh yeah, you can grab it with the air, that, which is crazy. You press like two buttons to grab. Wow. Let me do this one super before. No! I wanted to chuck watermelons at him. There you go. Looks good. All right. Cool. Yeah, that that's that. 
That's the only the, that's the only time you'll see me play video games. Right? Like I, I don't have the time to play video games as much as I used to anymore. All right, let's pop this back in. Uh, yeah, that that is uh, the power, you know, that's what the capabilities of what DC Digital did. Let's close this up. So yeah, if you guys want to install, uh, get your Dreamcast installed, just hit me up uh, through my email. It's on the info on the bottom. And yeah, this is what I generally do. <laughs> Let's put this back together now. Close this up. Okay. Anyways, okay, now nah, it's at least building. Yeah, the thing about the DC Digital, it, it also uh, you could also like output it through the regular CRT as well, so you could have it on uh, two simultaneous displays running at the same time. So the D DC Digital, as you can see, has no lag on it. Um, the only lag that's uh, on it is from the capture card itself, but there's no lag on it. Uh, you could use it to capture stuff, video. And as you can see, it's really cr crispy. Mad crispy. Let's put this back together. Amazing man, like what FPGA can do. Yeah, the PS1 is going to be really promising once uh, that comes out. There we go, just pop this back in, pop this guard back in, pop this back in. Let's do this back in. Let's put the original drive back in. So these two are done now. Let's drive. All right, there you are. That's that for now. I am getting a little bit hungry. It is uh, hitting about 8 o'clock right now over here in New York. Oops. Probably just uh, cut, wrap it up from here for the, for tonight. We'll see if we'll do something tomorrow. I mean, we'll, we'll see. If I, again, you know, if I'm at that doing anything. Just out of the way. But. Probably get some rest too, you know. We got a couple more mods after uh, after I take off the stream. I mean, uh, you know, take this after I finish this up, wrap this up. Oops. So nice little hole right there, nice and clean.
Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Uh, I'm always down for that. I mean, I need something to do anyways, you know, just uh, so like, I could actually talk to people and stuff like that on the stream. In case you, uh, you're not so bored aside from like, playing the music. Got this done. And this time. Yeah, I'm always down. Like, I'll, I'll be running these uh, Monday to Friday. The average, oh, uh, average time takes me about, like, now that I get these drilled down, like, about an hour, hour or so, hour and change. Probably, you know, you know like, it, it used to be like three or four hours, but now it's like it's gotten down to like an hour. So, I mean, it's fine though. Like, like you, you have a bunch of people that uh, have like a bunch of questions, but like not somebody that's like reliable that knows how to provide some sort of proper information to get get it down, I guess. I mean, there's a bunch of people like that, but it's hard to find the right people on it. Usually, you know, like when, when somebody says, oh, it's not working, what's, what's the, what, how do I fix this? Recap. Generic answer is always going to be a recap or something. Replace the capacitors? No, not really. But I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys coming through, you know, just to uh, come and hang out with me so I could just talk shit. Like I'm always down, you know, to, to, uh, to do this, um, I guess, every, every uh, Monday through Friday. Before. And it's good though, you know, like, I'll be working on something new every day, like, I have a variety of shit to work on. It's good to learn, I mean, this is what I'm here for, just to provide, like, some sort of education for people, to, you know, to pick up on, on uh, modding. There isn't a lot of that, you know, just to provide, like, like straight up Q&A. I mean, if you have any other questions, like randomly, just toss them at me. I'll, I'll do the best I can to answer them for, for pretty much everything. Like, I do a lot of variety of mods. And I, I, I love teaching. I'll do my best to teach everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, whoops. Wrong side. Wrong hole. That's what she said, though. All right, bro. But yeah. I mean, just to learn it, it, it helps just to uh, pick this stuff, pick up on this stuff. It's a good hobby to have, you know. That's uh, how, how it happened for me, man. Like, I, I, I was always fascinated with this shit. And, like, it just, it's crazy. I didn't even go to school for this. Like, I, I didn't go to college for any of this shit. But, like, eventually I just picked it up because, like, I was just so interested in it. I just did my own research and stuff. Like, I don't know, and it just grew from there. But yeah, I'll, I'll be down to, uh, to do some more Q and A's and stuff like that. Um, you guys have any questions or anything like that before I shut this off for the day? Get some noodles and shit. If not, I'll probably just end it. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, take.